Hello my friends, welcome back to the channel, always in the series about Room Database for Android. In this video, we are going to see how we can write automated tests for our Room Database. Let's get started. Now, testing database is a little bit controversial topic, so whether you test it or not, of course, you have to see if our database is getting back the required results, especially if you are doing complicated queries and something like that. But the way on how to test the database, it's that controversial part. Now, for example, Room here provides something called in-memory database. This way, you can see if your Room database is working as expected. But you can't rely on that when doing integration tests and end-to-end -end tests because you want to simulate or mimic the exact production environment because in-memory database is different from normal SQLite database. For example, there is some constraint of like the size. Let's say if the device is full, well, if you try to insert things into room database, it will produce an error. You won't have this kind of error in room. You won't test that, you won't test that, that's up to you. But there is a difference between the environments. What we can do is that we can use the in-memory database in order to validate our assumption about our queries they're working correctly or not. And then when using the integration test, like normal end-to-end -end tests and everything, you can use production-ready room for that. And then we will have to like uh, tear down, like delete it after you complete the test and everything. So how would we get started about that? Now you can go here directly to this one, create a new class. Let's call it room tests, or let's call it just word tests, like that. And that's where you have to create a test. Well, this kind of test will run on your real device, right, or an emulator or plus the real device. But keep in mind that you can test your room database directly on your host machine like this local machine. This will make it really fast. But as I said, we want to mimic the exact SQLite implementation of the exact device you are trying to achieve. Because the difference is that the implementation for the room memory database for your local machine will be different from the device. Always try to simulate where the user will try to use your app. So here we have just to, to do that and let's get started. First of all, we have to get a reference to our database. So we'll do it like following private will do late in our word database where database we have the word database exactly here it is it will be late in it and we will set it in the setup function the way on how to set it will be different like keep in mind that you can also use health in order to inject dependencies here you can do that but since we are going to use it only in this test it won't be a problem we we'll do word database like following and from that you can do room dot in memory database builder we will need a context you can get the context from the app application provider, something like that. Exactly, get application context. And then here you will need like the class of database, which is, I'm sorry, word database, this one, dot class, like following. And then what you will do simply, you will build it on. Now, this is how you can get a reference to the database. But what we want from the database, not actually the database, we want the DAO in order to test if our queries are working correctly or not. So simply, you do the word DAO, like following, and you will have to store this object. Well, I will have to duplicate this one, or maybe I will just do the following. No, I will just keep it because I will have to close it when I complete. When I do the tear down function here, I will use my database in order to do what? In order to close, something like that. And here in the word database, what we'll have here the word DAO, which is a DAO, sorry, and following, and as you can see, it is working correctly, but here we will assign it to the word DAO. Now here you, are, or you want to think about the queries you are using, and if this database is working correctly or not. So for example, we want to test after inserting a word, well, if we get multiple words, we will have to see if the words are there or not. For simplistic thing, I'm going to use like normal list here. I won't be using complicated stuff here, of course. Let's see if after inserting one thing, after inserting one word, I must see that word. Like this is the stupidest name I ever named my test with. <laughs> this is just an example, of course, but let's start. So what we'll do is that we'll do word deal and we do our insert direct we insert word now keep in mind that this is spendable function what i will do is that i will do run blocking test that way i can you know use that here is the catch what i will do here is the following i will try to add a word and let's give it one id for example or let's keep the id like that and use a word of for example abc usually in tests we follow like the triple a pattern which is arrange act and assert now this is the arrange part normally we should be prepared that before this is the act part and then we will assert things so we will ask the database for the data to get all words and then we will store them okay let's call them words and after doing one insert 
what I will have to see is that the word is not empty. I will assert true that the word, or let's say, is not empty. That might be an assertion. Or maybe you can assert that, for example, the size is one. Let me do that. Let me do the equals, like following, and let's make it one here, and give me the size, please. And why not also? We can assert that the first name is ABC, okay? Because for the words at the position zero, we have to check like our word is ABC. Let's run this test. Now here is our test running. As you can see, it is running correctly. On the device, you won't be able to see anything because this is happening on the background, I think. Now there is a problem with this kind of tests. Well, when we write the test after writing the code, because the tests will run directly, how we are going to know if you are testing the correct thing or not. So always try to have a failing test. This is the kind of approach we work in test driven development. Okay, and as you can see here, we have an error because the expected was a, B, but we got, we got A, B, C, so our test is working correctly. You can do the same thing here. Now, this test is asserting many things at once. That might be a problem, but we are asserting kind of the same behavior, like avoid asserting multiple things. If you want to assert multiple things, try to divide the test into two. Let's say, for example, before inserting, when I get all the words, size must be zero. Let me check that. And it should work, right? Let me delete that from here, run it. And you can see it is working correctly. But here in this test, I'm kind of asserting many things at once. Like I should have another test completely named before inserting things to database. We must see the database empty. That's kind of test you can write. But this is generally how you can test your Joomla database for the validation of the queries you are writing. Let's say we have a more complicated query. Here, for example, I'm just getting the word alphabetically using the order by. So if I insert two words, for example, I must get them in the right sort order. Let me just copy that test and do after inserting many words, C must results must be sorted. Okay, I'm not following any good patterns here, the naming, I'm just trying to run the test. Let's say I'm going to insert many tests. I'm going to insert, for example, the B here, and let's see just the J, and finally, let's insert something with the V. And I will do that in a different order. So with that in mind, I will get the alphabetical thing, alphabetically sort, and using that word, I must see the size of four. That's the first thing, and I must see some order the one, the two, and the three. Now I will make the test go wrong. For example, it will be the first the V, then the BC, then the ABC, then the, this one. I must see that test failing, run that test. I must see it fail. Usually in test driven development, I won't even add this line. I won't add, add all this, but since I can not take this big step, it's not a problem for me right now. So run this test, here is the result. As you can see, expected VV add towards ABC. Okay, so let's, make this test running correctly. So the result first one will be ABC, the second this one, the third this one, and this one. If I run the test right now, it should go correctly. Exactly, it is working correctly. So our query is working correctly. Now keep in mind, as I said, this kind of test, I'm using this set to validate my DAO, to see if my DAO is working correctly. Now, if you want to test, like for example, your view model, this will be completely a different thing. Well, you can also, as I said, you can also inject this DAO as needed. But keep in mind that when working with integration tests, for example, and end-to-end -end tests, you want to mimic the exact environment where the user will be using your app. So make this in mind and use this kind of test whenever you want to test the validity of your query and your DO, if they are working correctly as expected or not. Now keep in mind that you can use the same module here, for example, if let's say you want to provide this kind of database, but in memory thing in order to test other parts. Let's say you want to do that thing. You can replace this module, you can replace this module with a module specific to test. And here, instead of returning this word database, what you'll have to do, you will simply return this one. Well, you have to provide context here, of course. Well, I made a video about this when you can replace your modules with test modules specific for the test when doing dependency injection. You can find the video here or here. It is part of dependency injection with Hilt series. You can find all that information there. So that way you can inject this DAO to the room data source. This kind of an extra layer we did when following the clean architecture pattern. That way you can provide the word DAO specific to the test from the memory 
to this room word data source so you can provide it to the repositories and that way you can provide this repository the use case and the use case to the model and so on so that's it for this video and that series i hope you enjoyed and how you can work with room databases for android how you can write your dao your entities your own database and how you can use this room database with best practices such as repository your view model your use cases and how you can test this and inject different dependency different version of the room that are specific for the test so thanks a lot for following this series to the end and thanks for watching this video to the end don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you have another series you want me to do let me know in the comments below thanks a lot and see you in the next videos Salam alaikum.